just to make these platters. And I know I've done this before, maybe a couple years ago. Um, but these stretch things can be kind of fun. Um, different way if the wheels get me to you, right? Or if it never got to you at or all. Or if you're incapable. <laughs> Stop it. Um, it so, you. what I start with is a piece of clay that's at a given thickness, and it, it takes a little bit of experimentation to find out what thickness works for you. Um, but what this is, what this will end up being, or what happens here is um, the sides become the edges, and the top becomes the, the body of the tray. Um, so you can almost think about you know that thickness being well, how wide do you want that edge to be? So. I get it close into the shape that I'm looking for. That one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, this one will do a textured top. So I've got my whippy wire. It's just a regular wire that I wrapped around my needle tool very carefully and methodically. And stretch it back out. So. Give it something of a texture on the top, and then I'm gonna cut the sides because I like the the ability to give it some wiggle. And that'll change how it's looking. So I just leave it over the edge a little bit. Are you intentionally using different wires on the Well, not. Thank you. You're quick. Me, which isn't hard to do. Just like that. So like that. Um, and then, you know, that might be enough, or you might want a flat tray and wig the sides. Makes a little more sense, and that's usually the way I do it. Um, but. I had this idea to use the sun and then have all these things that depend on the sun around it. And so then the wavies are the sun rays. What have you been swapping? I'm playing with the boys' blocks here. He's had some home time, can you tell? <laughs> Quite the contrary. <laughs> so we'll get some some sun going in the middle. Let's get rid of that because I don't know I don't want that. And then oh, Mr. Butterfly. Okay, go all Bob Ross on us now. Chicken. Pretty pretty cow. <laughs> what? Why do you got to record these things? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure this one's going to be recorded. Like I've got something to say, but I'm not sure I want the world to hear it. <laughs> I can edit Not it that out. anybody's ever going to watch it. You might want to turn that off for just a minute. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Oh, Look at that. Oh, for for this kids. is for my kids. You know, I was, what do I, you know, like, I've got to put some, ooh, there's the dolphin, don't forget the dolphin. The dolphin doesn't go with your protein. Yeah, but he likes the sun, too. The waves, the waves and the sun set thing, pleasure. When it was, when it came to the decision of what it would be, it's got to be something. So, why not? Another chicken, maybe. My grandma loves chickens. She's got chickens all over the place. She's got this uh, chicken dance. Chicken. Oh. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. We danced that and all the buddies around here. Thank you. A little battery operated thing. And when we go see her, the, got kids, the, the kids, do you? <laughs> yes. The kids just like incessantly, <laughs> and stop. And again. And it goes and faster and again, faster and faster. Again, faster yeah, yeah. yeah, I got one. Yeah, I got one. And we all laugh, and so it's just a blessing. 
space. <laughs> yeah. space Very here. nice, Dad. But you the kids really it. love that. Do you want? Do you want? Do you guys want to take it home with you? No. Yes. <laughs> no, Grandma. No, that's a special thing for here. <laughs> so there it is. Noah's Ark. And then the stretching. So you pretend like you got a job in a in a in an Italian pizza making factory. And then you start stretching this thing out. And it's really about getting it moving and flowing. If you're afraid of dust, it's not a good technique for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the beauty of this, and this is this is why I'm not afraid to use these things because you don't know what they are. They, uh, they abstract so nicely. But nobody knows that you need that. chicken sting. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, that's a really neat mark. What'd you use? Oh, that's a chicken. <laughs> I think I love this at Ensika. Are you filming? Yeah. Yeah, Kramer and I got a show at Collectivo Coffee. We'll set up next weekend. See? Told you she was going to be fancy. So the, the, the nice thing is, is you really can't to a great extent, sure. control what's going to happen, and so yeah, you, it's pretty hard to screw it up when you don't really have much you can control. So, yeah, yes, obsessive also person with my knees having issues. <laughs> hey, I've worked damn hard to let go of my rigidity with my oh, work. Man, it's been a battle like for a long time. Um, this has helped a lot. So that's about as far as I'll take it. Um, they end up being a little bit thicker than most of the other things that I make. Um, but that's okay, I mean they're sort of these serving trays. And if they're a little bit heavy that's nice, they're not going to blow away off the table. So then, what to do, here's a board, and here's some paper, and so the the idea now is to get it up onto this paper so I can use the paper to give this thing some definition. Find out where my board is exactly. Okay. And then I've got the obvious scraps here, but those are still decent movies that I've got this. This is the problem with this process for this environment, is that you sort of need stuff to put underneath there, and clay is the best thing that, that it works the best. You know, wadded up newspaper, towels would work, old cardboard. Man, you guys are amazing. <laughs> They've got it all over there. Look at it, ready, whatever. This is the other thing that I think is. Dangerous at this point. It's the fist. <laughs> <laughs> is that an exacting knife? Yes, it's it is an exacting knife. Like Isn't that cool? And then <laughs> you can friend. pretend you're in the Warriors. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna. I'm uh. So, <clears throat> again, like I was saying before, I, the paradox of this is that you sort of need to have scrap clay around that really does work the best. So, a couple of these wires going. I mean, you could. You know, some of you guys have some pretty good recycling programs going for yourself where you can, you know, when, these are going to get to a stiff leather hard, but, you know, if you break them up and throw some water in there and re-wedge it, they'll go back to usable clay again. In Notre Dame, we make all of our own clay, and it costs us about 20 cents a pound. So, it, you know, it's 
it's a different it's a different way of thinking about the material, right? It's not a commodity; it's a tool because it's cheap enough to be a tool. Do you make it like like the concrete or something like the big? Yeah, we've got a yeah. Well, there's a mixer in here that's like a baby version of the one that we have. It um, mixes. You can go, I suppose you could push it to close to 300 pounds at a time. Um, usually, I'd keep it to two. 200 pounds is a nice mixture. Um, any more than that, it starts to get a little too full. So the paper is nice to lift that surface up. And then I'll just build this dam all the way around and I suppose the you know the height would matter right and how, how deep the thing was um, he's not here this week uh, um, Alex the gentleman that sits down over here and um, does the hand building he did a thing with um, similar to this but using old picture picture frames Right, did you guys? Yeah, he came out and really put that down. Yeah. Um, he, just, he just screwed a, a pitcher frame to a, like to a board. Yes. Yep. He just screwed it to a piece of plywood, laid a slab on top, and dropped it onto the floor, and poof, it pushes that clay down inside. And this is, I'm not going to drop this, but um, this. So he laid the clay over the. Over the, the over the frame, and, then and by dropping it, then the clay drops down into the frame. Accepts the mold. Yep. Gives it a nice sharp edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, we're going to do sort of similarly, but it's not as extreme. So all I'm really looking for is somewhat of a flat area on the bottom so she can sit. Um, you wouldn't have to have that, I mean you could add feet underneath this thing, um, but my experience with these shapes um, and having four feet is that they never ever ever sit flat. Um, the best thing to do is just leave a flat spot on the bottom that can act as the foot. And then the, one of the last things I'll do is just kind of refine that lip. Pull this a little bit more. Does it matter that there's thicker and thinner spots in your tray? What do you mean? Like this is thicker, the clay itself is thicker than some of the other spots? No. No, it's not going to matter as much in this, in this situation. So then it's just... I had, what did I do with my water? I swear I brought water over here. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I swear right I there, it. this foot bottle. best to wait for leather hard for this, but then what I do is go back to that edge and compress it. And I'm going to further abstract some of my 
animals, but I'm not, you know, that's, that's really okay. The vitality is there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this builds in strength yep. into it. Yeah, and it sort of takes that, takes that edge off of being really thin mm -hmm. um, and fragile. And you can be as creative with it as you want, you know. Uh, that part seemed like it wanted to be pushed in a little more. Get a nice little... They bite a little bit, um, but I've had really good luck with them not drooping too much. Yeah, it'll it'll shape it'll change its shape a little. But, um, usually because it's a bit thicker on the ends, uh, it's not too bad. Do anything special when you um, blaze it then later to bring out some of them? Well, you know uh, that. Staining the surface first definitely helps. Um, and then picking those glazes that are going to allow for the texture to remain, you know. The celadons are nice for that. The tomoku can be a risk. But a risk worth taking, right? Right, and I might do something like that to kind of give it a little bit of upward shape. You know, if you left it flat like that, it would probably drop. But by doing that, it will likely stay. Yep. <laughs> um, and then when there is texture, I'll go back. And again, I think leather hard is a good place to do this. But if you're gentle, I think you can take down those sharp points so they don't cut the user. You know, it'd be a bummer to reach in for a piece of bread and come away bleeding. Yeah, ruin the bread. Yeah, everybody else might be pissed. <laughs> Scotch-Brite pad at, at Bone Dry works really well for things like this, too. Yep. They just kind of rub it on the surface and it just, it's dusty, though. The Scotch-Brite pad. I'll try to avoid as much dust as I can. Bing! Excuse me, um, been a while since that table's been And then maybe at the end there's an opportunity to push it in places that might need it, or pull some places down. paper is going to pull a little moisture um, and then as soon as it's leather hard enough I'll pop it out of there and flip well, you it over. You don't really have to worry about it being flat. I mean, it's part of the... No. To right. I mean, the bottom's flat and so it can sit in it. It's really only got a foot on it that's maybe about like that big, which is plenty. Um, and then when once they're fired, I've you know, if they're not quite sitting right or even if they are, I'll, you get those uh, little rubber Mm -hmm. Feet yeah. stick on feet that are have a little bit of height to them. Those make them nice. Yeah, those make a nice little riser. So you can use sort of cheesy stamps and and not feel too bad about it in the end because they they 
distort so much that they look a lot more artistic than they start out to be, which is how most of us are. <laughs> there we go. That's my demo. It's pretty cool. It was magical. Thanks. Mm -hmm.